How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here today checking out the games from Irem for the NES. Unfortunately, not too many of them. Only four games according to NES Guide. We're going to cover them all in this video. I'm going to rank them along the way that video starts, well, right now. Image Fight, I think it's one of the more decent shooters on the NES. Looks great, feels great, has that ability where some shooters do this, where you can choose how fast you want to go on the fly. It's not like it's like you choosing your speed as an item or an upgrade. You can just, you know, do you want to take it fast? Do you want to take it slow? And you choose that for yourself just anytime. I like that idea. Although you do get lots of power-ups in this game, you can make yourself super buff shooting all these directions, including to the side and all that. That's pretty crazy. The bosses were really good in this game too. I remember the bosses just being like huge. And a lot of shooters had huge bosses too, but I mean, that made this, this, it's a fun game. It's a, it's a totally decent shooter. If you're into shooters, haven't checked this one out yet. I'd, I'd rank it as a B. I think it's really good. We got Kickle Cubicle and Kickle Cubicle is one of my favorite puzzle games for the NES. You play as a super cute character and you can freeze your enemies to turn them into blocks. You can push those blocks into the water, which turns them into platforms. Other enemies, you can't do that, but you can freeze them and then destroy them. Um, some enemies you can freeze, but you can't destroy them. So there's other little, you know, different enemies have different uh, strategies on how you can try to get rid of these guys. You gotta go through each level, pick up the magic bags. That's what makes it so you can go on to the next level. And there's a ton of levels in this game. It keeps you playing. I also like how this game also features bosses at the end of the worlds too. There's only a few worlds, like four of them. But man, just what a fun game. It's a game that I come back to. I play through it about once a year. I love this game that much. And I'm personally, I'm giving this game an S. I think it's that good. Make sure you're subscribed for more videos and consider being a Patreon. It really supports the channel. Every time I do one of these videos, there's always that one game from the company where the comments are just like, this game better get a high score or whatever the case is. And that game for this list may be Metal Storm. I am a huge fan of Metal Storm, I'll let you know up front. I think it's a great game. I think the graphics are great. I think the sound, the music is uh, slamming, a bop, spanking. What are the kids saying today about how awesome something music is? That's that's what I would say about this game. <laughs> how about that? This game is pretty difficult, but it also has a password system. So it's not like some of the older NES games where you have to play through it from start to finish. So the, with the password system, that makes this game beatable at least. And the bosses in this game do have patterns too that you can look out for. The gimmick behind this game, not only is it kind of a cool, you play as this little you know, robot mech thing going around shooting people. You can shoot up and you can shoot down too, which is fantastic. The gimmick is you can anti-gravity anytime. So when you if you want to go on the ceiling, jump on the ceiling. If you want to go on the floor, jump on the floor. You can do that anytime you want. In fact, one of your upgrades early on is you turn into a fireball, basically. So if there's an enemy above you, you can do that, and you can crash right into them. I love it. Lots of different gameplay levels, too. So it's not just the same kind of going through the factory. Um, there's some, you know, there's one that you're on an elevator, so you're like, like having to dodge enemies while you're in this kind of like Willy Wonka's elevator. I remember there's another level later on where you're on these platforms that are constantly moving and it scroll through. So when you move to the top, you'll end up on the bottom. And then when you change directions and stuff like that, this game, this game has so much going on for itself. I think it's a fantastic game. I think it's super excellent. I'm going to give this game, uh, I'll give this game an A. I think it's awesome and definitely worth checking out if you can. A lot of people may not know this, but Squoon features a little a little slip by Nintendo. Uh, it was in the Famicom version, and Nintendo didn't censor something in the title screen. Uh-oh. It plays like an early Famicom shooter. <laughs> you play as a submarine. I remember this game being super uncommon, even when I was growing up. It was a game I've always heard of, and I saw it in magazines, and it was in that weird Nintendo Power Buyer's Guide thing, but literally never saw one for rent, for sale, for anything until until later on when I started collecting, like in the late 90s. And it's not like I missed out on a lot. It's okay. It's just like, eh. You know, it's a, you're, you're, it's, a, it's an underwater shooter. Um, you can shoot enemies, you can save the people. Like sometimes when you blow something up, all these uh, swimmers kind of swim out and you can collect them and get some extra points. Fun game, it really is. I think I called it Scoon earlier. I think it, it might just be Scoon because there's no U in it. So let's call it Scoon. If you already put a comment in there, just leave it and I'll read it later. It's my own fault for mispronouncing it, I'm sure. It's not bad, it's a C to me. And I think this is the first time that my ranking ever gave any game a single column. Only four games, but one of each in all the top four slots. As you can see over here and over here, I've ranked so many more games for NES games and even a few Super Nintendo games, and there's always new ones coming out soon. So make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you real soon.